live. Hold on, I got my intro music still. Hold on, man. Here we go, baby. Oh yeah. <laughs> What's cracking, everybody? Money Smart Guy, Matt Zapali here, repping music from Dean Mason, the brother of one of my guests today, John Mason, both live from their respective spots in Orlando, Florida. And uh, last week, 50 people asked me this question about starting an insurance agency. And it came a lot from people in the real estate industry and mortgage industry. And if you're coming from a lateral industry like mortgage, like real estate, you're going to love this and how we can provide the jelly to your peanut butter. Because put together, you got peanut butter and jelly. Peanut, peanut butter and <laughs> jelly. That's right. <laughs> so, uh, guys, uh, uh, welcome to the live stream. I'm your host. If you don't know who I am, that's my fault. My name is Matt Zapala, commonly known as Money Smart Guy. And uh, I'm a co-owner, along with a fellow co-owner here too as well, of PHP Agency. And um, my background comes from the Marine Corps as a United States veteran, transitioned into the financial services industry. It's been 19, going on 20 years now. And uh, it's been a blast building an agency with PHP. And uh, to help me discuss this topic about building your agency, starting your own agency, and highlighting the backgrounds of being a real estate or mortgage or a break dancer, uh, you can do very well in our industry. So uh, with me today are my two guests. Uh, first guest uh, on top, his name is Nick Polson, comes from a real estate background, earning six figures. Uh, uh, on the verge of literally uh, uh, opening the doors to the new office in Orlando, Florida, is being built out as we speak. And along with Nick Polson, is a guy that actually recruited him, uh, trained him, coached him. They go back years, uh, and his name is Jonathan Money Mace Mason, and he's the host of Money Tip Tuesdays. And they're here now on the Money Smart Show to discuss this topic of what 50 people were asking last week. So, guys, welcome to. The Money Smart Show. Thank you, thank you, thank you. So, so, so Mace, let's let's start with you, brother. Um, talk to us a little bit about your background and how you got involved in the insurance industry. Because I know you, you know, growing up, you just wanted to be an insurance agent. Growing up, you just wanted to be an owner of an insurance agency, right? Of course, Matt. But talk to us about your your getting on uh, uh, getting on board from your background into the insurance industry. Loud and clear, licking chicken. Go for it. Uh, you are st actually you are static. Okay, no problem. All right. Maybe yeah, maybe refresh screen. Nick, we got you loud and clear, or loud, loud and looking very clear. So so, let's uh let's let's transition you while he logs back on. Nick, okay. how did you get involved? What you know, a lot, lots of times people get involved in Wall Street or they get involved in in um in real estate. How did you get involved in real estate? I actually got involved in real estate. I was in between my EMT and my paramedic class and my dad needed somebody to cheat off of. Okay. Cool. <laughs> so he's like, I could, he couldn't pass the real estate test. The real estate test is really hard. So he's like, Hey, come take it with me. I'll pay for it. It's like, okay. So I actually went and took the class. Um, did really well. Uh, at the age of 23, I made my first six figures and I was like, Oh, I like this. This is nice. Um, still trying to be a firefighter, got, got into it. There was a hiring freeze because that was during the time 05, 06, 07 um, when the market started to come down, the real estate market started to come down. So I got, you know, I, I stayed with it and I actually got hired finally with uh, Fire Rescue. Didn't, I, I still loved it, but I wasn't in love with it. I liked real estate. I loved, I never thought I was going to be a salesman, right? I wasn't going to be a salesman. I wasn't, I was going to be a firefighter paramedic. And I got into real estate, loved it, made six figures. Um, I love showing homes. I started working with investors and now I manage like 120 properties. Um, I was actually the sales manager of the year for the entire state of Florida for Exit Realty, um, the company I was with um, four or five years ago. And 
I just, I, I love real estate. I mean, to me, I, it was, I thought I was going to do it forever and I still will do it forever. Um, but now I want to be the investor side. I gotcha. I gotcha. So we got, uh, so let's, let's uh, go to Money Mace real quick because, you know, he's, a, he's the one that uh, uh, tipped you off to the opportunity of being involved in the insurance industry. So Money Mace, you're back with us, bro. Can you hear me and see me okay? Not yet. Nice, nice. Loud and clear and visually, you're not frozen. No more Max Headroom style. That's so, right. uh, so Mace, let, 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 uh, let everybody know, man, how, how did you get involved in the insurance industry with that bar mitzvah and breakdancer background? Well, I went to school for insurance for eight years. I have four <laughs> degrees in insurance. I, I, there was this one day I was four years old and I had this amazing dream. And I, <laughs> my mom and dad's room says, guys, I, I really want to be an insurance agent when I grow up. So that's that. <laughs> <laughs> it never happens. I'll tell you. You know, it's it never uh, happens. You know, what's so funny is insurance has this whole stigma about being boring and slow. You know, and, and you know, guys with glasses and uh, pocket protectors and sitting at a desk processing paperwork all day. That is not it. Like even looking in your office, you have a little basketball hoop sent right behind you. So, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you know, so we'll play the next month. But it's it's so crazy. Um, my background's pretty funny, actually. It's not the typical pre uh, background, but uh, I played soccer growing up, went to school, uh, played in college, you know, played at that level. I had a couple knee surgeries, retired early, way before I wanted to, and uh, had to find something to do. I was did very well in school. I went to Jackson University, JU, in the up north Florida area. And when I came back home, there was really no jobs available, 35, 40,000 a year entry level position. It's just that that's paycheck to paycheck. I didn't want to go through that. It's very expensive in South Florida, even when you're single. And um, I just knew that I didn't want to have to deal with that. And then looking at different professions, I was looking at people that I was going to interviews with. The top guy there was only making a low six figures after 15, yep. 20 years. And I said, there's got to be more. But let me kind of go back to what I was comfortable doing in the meantime, which was entertainment. In high school, I started doing bar mitzvahs and weddings and corporate events and that kind of stuff and fell back into it. I was at LA Fitness. And I saw this kid teaching a, a hip hop class as aerobics. This is before Zumba. This is the original Zumba. And I went in and said, what are you doing? It, you know, we used to do bar mitzvahs. We did it together. He brought me to a company, became a top guy there, and just started taking off from that. And then um, a couple years went by, the recession hit, and my dad called me. My dad's been a teacher 40 plus years. And, and, and you know, teachers you know, aren't becoming <coughs> teachers to make millions of dollars. It's an honorable profession, like being in the military, you know, it's something that we need, but just not always the highest paying. My parents went through a pretty bad hit in the recession. My, you know, my relatives went through a bad hit in the recession. And I realized that I'm smart, but no one ever sat me down and taught me about money. And I wanted to understand the game, because all this is, this is a game. Taxes yeah. is a game. Investments, it's a game. You just have to sit down and go through it. So I wanted to learn. So I uh, called some buddies, did some interviews, some companies made sense, some didn't, uh, wasn't too impressed. And then what's funny is my brother calls me, says, hey, I got somebody I want you to meet. I said, who is it? Yep. It ends up being our CEO, Patrick Bed David, who's now going to be on the cover of investmentnews.net. Your brother. Yeah. The, your yeah. DJ brother. My DJ brother, right? He was, he was DJing all over the world. The, uh, by the way, he wrote that song. Yeah, he produced it. He wrote yeah, it. He produced it. Himself. Yeah. So, but that's my brother, the, the top DJ. He's friends with our CEO, makes the introduction. I have no idea who Patrick Bed David is at the time. No idea. And my brother says, look, this is the guy. Come meet him. Not a problem. On a week's notice, I fly out to LA, interview, loved everything Patrick said. Did, did, did Patrick fly you out? Did, did, did he, did oh, he no. tell you a flint? How, no. How'd you fly out, bro? It was kind of funny. Uh, I said, uh, I said, when do you need me there? This is on a Wednesday. He says, I need you there on Tuesday night for our training. I said, great. When are you getting my ticket? He says, no, you're getting your own ticket. You get in my hotel. No, I'm sure. He says, I'm John. I'm sure you'll figure that out. Five hundred and sixty-eight dollars later, my plane <laughs> ticket. I paid to go interview. Is what happened. And I realized you can't say the right thing to the wrong person and the wrong thing to the right one. If people are going to do it, they're going to do it. It's yeah. really that simple. I was looking for an opportunity. I was looking for change. I didn't know much about the industry. I was going off faith on my bro what my brother said. I said, fine, I'll go see what's going on. And it was that simple. Worst case scenario, I party my butt off in LA. Best case, I find a career. 
that's what I do. It was really that simple. And um, loved everything Patrick said. And he was telling me about the industry. I didn't realize, number one, how big the insurance industry was. You know, talk about all the buildings downtown Chicago, Orlando, Tampa, Florida, they're all owned by banks, insurance companies. For yep. the money. Yeah, let, 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 money let, understand money, make money. Let, let, let's get into that here in a second. So, so for those of you tuning in right now, which I really appreciate, uh, we got a bunch of guys dropping comments, which uh, Brandon here is making sure we get uh, we get your comments up there. Thanks for being part of the conversation. But also, uh, if you want to say, you know, Matt, I want to share this conversation because sharing is caring. Let the world know, man, there, there's a completely different way out there. That's what, what Mason just talked about. We're disrupting the industry. We're making insurance cool, you know, cool again, because back in the day it was cool. Uh, we drifted away from that, but uh, we're a generation now that we're, we're making history repeat itself, but we're making it in a new, fresh, cool, hip way. So uh, please share this uh, share this uh, video for watching out on on Facebook. And let's get let's get back to you, Nick. So Nick, you and Mace, you, you guys go way back, don't you? Yep, <clears throat> we used to play baseball back when we were like 10, 11 years old. Yep. And so when he initially talked to you about this business, what did you initially tell him? I told him no. So we, yeah, eight years ago, <clears throat> he approached me in a uh, Starbucks out on Delray Beach. He called me up, said, hey, you know, I, I got something that I think you're, you'd be interested in, an extra opportunity. You, you open to make an extra money, right? I said, yeah, of course. I sat with him. He went over everything and it just wasn't the time. Like he didn't have anything to show me or anything else like that. And I'm like, you know what, John, you do you. I'm going to go do real estate. Good luck. And, and, you know and John, I mean? you were just starting at this time, right? I was literally just starting. I don't think the so, company even had a website. So, so let, let, let's let's paint the picture here real quick. Mason's making zero money. Yeah. Nick is already making six figures in real estate. Yeah. So it's kind of hard for John to say, okay, I, let me show this what kind of works. So, which is a lot of people. I mean, they're selling them an the idea without a proof of concept. And mm -hmm. sometimes, John, people with less character would quit. And they never go follow back up with their buddy, Nick, that they play baseball with since 10, 11 years old. But here's the thing. John didn't quit. And, and by the way, guys, for those of you um, uh, tuning in right there, don't know John Mason. Uh, John Mason is about $8,000 away from making a quarter million dollars a year. Not a lot of people make $250,000 a year. I think less than, I think the stat was less than, I think, 8 to 12% of people in America today file a tax return of $250,000 or more. So, you're talking to a guy that went from bar mitzvahs to break dance to balling, making quarter million dollars a year, and uh, well, eight thousand dollars for making a quarter million dollars a year. It's a lot easier here for him to talk to to Nick, but 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 Nick was making more money. So think about that. Nick's making more money, and John's looking to recruit him. Nick says, "Dude, what do you know about this stuff? You're a break dancer. I knew it from ten years old. It made me money. At you. So what caused you guys to revisit the conversation?" So what happened was I saw I found this picture. <laughs> uh, Nick. I got thanks. you, buddy. You're gonna hold thanks. it. There's Nick. Z zoom it up. There you go. There you go. Zoom there's it up. <laughs> yeah. There's there's me at the bottom. I had a mullet, by the way, if you can't tell. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You did. So, so we were 11 years old playing for the Colorado Rockies in South Florida, and yeah. Uh, <laughs> yeah. So, so you know we met at the Starbucks in. Um, in uh, Coconut Creek eight years ago. Delray. Was, it, was it Delray? I thought it was Coconut Creek. Either way, South yeah. Florida. And, um, you know, he went his way. I went mine. Just, you know, kept in touch through social media here and there. I spoke with him a couple of years ago, actually, when I was in Jacksonville. Just following up, following up. And uh, then recently we started doing our trainings in Orlando. And then uh, through his family, they said, hey, you might want to go talk to Nick again. So then Nick and I, you know, got reconnected. I went to uh his parents house to do kind of a little overview for some people some friends and family and nick was testing me because uh his wife's uncle has been a financial advisor for years in south florida 20 plus years dealing with all high net worth clients and uh you know he's saying hey look my, my wife's uncle is telling me i need to get this policy what do you know about this as a little test and ah. in an iul life insurance policy from national life group I yeah, said, oh, that's one of, our, that's one of PHB said, oh. agencies carriers. I sold three of those yesterday with the number one right for the country. He said, what? I said, yeah. He says, okay, you have my attention. I did the whole presentation, did four homes of money. And no, by the time we were done, he had 50 people ready to rock and roll. So 
That's yeah. kind of what got what happened Th- through expansion. Through expansion, we got reconnected. That's awesome. And John, you just kept going, even though your friend from 10, 11, 10, 11 years old, you didn't let him discourage you, even though you had nothing to show for about what this opportunity can provide. No, I mean, if I listened to all my friends and family when I got started, I'd be doing absolutely nothing. The fact <laughs> is, I'm trying to live my life, not theirs. Um, you know, I had friends tell me that I was never going to get a full ride to play soccer, yet I was the only one in my high school that did. Um, I, I mean, I, it's just like that with, with a lot of things in life. Um, what's so crazy is the first people that we go get advice from are our friends and family. Yeah. And for whatever reason, I don't know why, but most friends and family are the most negative people. It's so weird. You know, and um, I don't know. I think it's maybe they, they love us and care about us too much. They don't want to see us get hurt or make mistakes. And they're trying to help us avoid it. But that's not helping us grow or get better. And, uh, you know, I, my mom and my dad, my dad's always telling me, John, you're going to be an entrepreneur. You're going to be successful. So my dad was that go for it. My mom was the concerned one. Are you going to make any money? You know, so, yeah, I said, yes, mom, I'll be all right. <laughs> and now everything's worked yeah. out. But uh, I got a lot of friends that said, you know, John, you're a little crazy. Stick with the entertainment. You know, they had a point. I mean, I can't blame them. You know, I, yeah. what the hell do I know about finance? What do I know about insurance or investments or taxes or retire? I don't nothing about it. I, my entire life's been around entertainment. Now I'm doing a, a complete 180. And, um, you know, I appreciate their feedback because without that, it wouldn't have grown. So I definitely appreciate that. So it actually made me stronger. But um, as far as getting discouraged, I had my moments, my ups and downs. But I just kept my eye on the long-term game. And, and Mason, one of my favorite videos that you did, I think it was about six, eight months ago, was when you paid off your parents' credit cards. I was only, I, I, almost a year and a half ago now. Well, it's been that fast, year and a half. So either way, you know, you've paid off your parents' credit cards, and a lot of people can't say they, they can do that for their parents, let alone their own credit cards. So, you know, yeah. I, I take, mean, take, um, I was, guts, I, I, I was going to say thanks. I appreciate it. And the fact is, you know, this business, what people don't realize with insurance, it's the highest paying industry. Yeah. And you don't go to you don't go for a four year degree for that. You go to insurance school for four days for that. And, what was your undergrad in? Uh, I have a BS and BS. Uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's a, it's a, I have a bachelor's of science in international business. Wow. Yeah. Okay. Uh, cool. By the way, it's, it's, it's kind of like the trend that's what's going on with, with our company these, these days. Yeah. Um, so, so back to the conversation with Nick. Nick, was there anything specific that John, uh, Dan Trey here from Dallas asks, what did John say to you that changed your mind? Was it him understanding the policies? Were you testing it or was there anything that triggered it was the te- it was the test you know the whole well look my wife's uncle who i trust told me to get this policy and he when he said well hey this is what i just sold three of these and we're the number one right in my mind already i'm like i'm in okay if this my wife's uncle is saying to get this i trust him and john's saying hey this is what we do i'm like well then i'm this is what i want to sell i want to do this so that's what made up my mind right then and there what made sense to you as a, as a realtor, as somebody making six figures already, why, why would you why would you even consider doing something else? What what intrigued you? You know, just I mean, I've always been intrigued by insurance. I knew it was like one of the highest paying industries. I've I was been I've been around it. All these guys that had a lot of money just selling houses to these guys. What do you do? I'm an insurance. Wow. Okay. Um, a lot of guys being growing up in South Florida, you know, there's a lot of money down there. I always see these nice big houses. I'm like, man, what do you what do you what do you do? I sell insurance. I was like, okay, but I never really put two and two together. You know, I always thought, okay, real estate. Everyone always thinks real estate. You know, realtors make so much money. You know, the average realtor only makes like twenty five thousand dollars, and that's gross. That's not even net. That is but gross. Think, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you know. So, and I think what only twenty five percent nationally make above a hundred thousand dollars. You know. So, but. I was making money quick, quickly as a realtor, and I wanted something that was going to give me residual income, right? In real estate, you're only as good as your last deal, right? If and you sell a house, estate, that's it. You're, you're done with the transaction. On to the now, next you gotta, house. now you got to find another buyer or another seller, get them pre-approved. The whole process could take. I was working with one buyer for almost two years, and they ended up not buying a house. It was a lot of waste of time, okay? A lot of showings. Yes. A lot of uh, get pre-approved, get showings. Yeah. Let's go to this yeah, house, you, go to this house. 
Yeah. And not only that, nowadays, I mean, everybody knows a realtor, Every mother, brother, sister, whomever is a realtor. There's so many realtors out there. So there's so much competition. So yeah. when, when John showed me this and showed me how, you know, the compensation plan and everything worked, I was like, you know what, this is makes sense. And it goes hand in hand, you know, because we, we look for people who want to work part time. Who doesn't want to make extra money? Everybody I know, all the firefighters and police officers that I know have a secondary hustle. Right? Yeah. Teachers, Usually teachers are tutors. <laughs> Yeah. Usually construction, right? Construction or mowing lawns. I know a lot of guys that mow yeah. lawns that are firefighters, you know? Yeah. So I'm like, look, why not do this? So why, I give them another opportunity because that's, you know, that's what I saw, another opportunity. And it's been going really well. I've been doing it for eight months now. Uh, I've been with PHP and I actually have some of my buyers that I sold them a house and now they're actually with PHP with us selling insurance. Wow. So what was, yeah. what was your pitch to them? I mean, they trust you as a realtor. They trust you so, as their agent. What's, what was your pitch to them? Why would you recruit them into the industry? Well, I just asked, um, this particular person was moving from a different state down to Florida. And uh, I was driving around showing houses and there's a lot of car time, right? So you don't want to just sit there and be quiet. So I just asked her, I was like, hey, do you have life insurance? And she says, actually, yeah, that's how I'm paying for my down payment. Wow. Yeah, the, whole, the whole life policy. And I was like, and I didn't really know enough yet to kind of go into it, but um. I was like, okay, cool. I said, well, what are you going to be doing when you're moving down here? That now you're transitioning from, you know, upstate to here. So I said, are you open to opportunity? You know, making extra money. She said, well, yeah. Brought it to a, one of John's um, presentations. And she, next thing you know, she's like, I like it. So she got started. And now she actually got promoted. <laughs> nice. Now, John, let's talk about that. You know, you're, you're starting brand new scratch. Mm -hmm. Got nothing to show for it. And of course, you're, you know, you, if, if Florida is anything like Chicago, you walk outside, you run across five realtors, oh, right? Yeah. Oh, There's yeah. just, or you run across somebody in tech, or you run across somebody selling, want to get you pitched back on and lock you back on Bitcoin. Okay. Yeah. But, but what's, what's, what have you found is one of the greatest attractions to insurance? Why the, why not only insurance, but why start your own agency? So a few things. One, I mean, you talked about real estate and so-and-so. You brought it up here. And I think one thing that attracts people to real estate is the potential of making money as well as the sex appeal that comes with the title. Mm -hmm. If you notice that every realtor has their best clothes on all the time. They wear nice cars, typically a Lexus, you know, uh, but it, it could take a long time for that payday. But with, with insurance, it actually pays faster. And it even pays more long term as well. So I think that's one thing that's also attracted a lot of realtors to the business, but they're not aware of that, you know. Um, but but as far as as far as building and even having an agency, uh, there's a Keller Cause, Wilson because you started Jacksonville from scratch, and you got Tommy Clark now running that. Mm -hmm. You got Bianca Rist now running that, mm -hmm. and you've transitioned to Orlando. Yeah. So you've proven your concept in Jacks. Now you're proving it again. Well, even Nick, Fort Lauderdale, Miami. You know, Fort Lauderdale, I, I, Miami. Yeah. Yep. Brittany Pelias, who came from New York Life. Yep. You know, Brittany. I recruited Brittany from New York Life. You know, she's making six figures. She's an equity owner now, running one of the Miami offices. Tony Martinez runs another Miami office. He came from Northwestern Mutual, as well as you know the practice company. Um, and then obviously Tommy Clark came from mortgages. Tommy Clark came from mortgages. Yep. Um, and now he's making six figures with PHP, equity owner, running the office. And Bianca came from um, medical sales. Bianca came from medical sales, and now she's doing insurance as well. Uh, she's a broker with the company. Yeah. Uh, so, so in Orlando, everything's from scratch. Obviously, you know, Panera Breads and Starbucks is how Hot we bread. call them. Hot bread. <laughs> Woo, right? So, um, but insurance is very, very similar to real estate. And I don't think people understand how parallel they are. See, in, in real estate, there's a broker and there's an agent in, in Lake Nona area. There's a big Keller Williams spot called, and they have a whole of Sears lounge called Keller Williams. U. it's where they train all their guys. I think there's over 200 agents out of that one location. Nice. That's a very happy broker. Cause every time those agents sell a house, that broker gets a piece of it. Yep. Well, the broker's got to train, recruit, retain. And then when the houses are sold, everyone gets paid. It's the same thing in insurance. We don't get paid to recruit. We recruit, we train, retain, get licensed, how families uh, policies are written, then we get paid. We get paid on the back end just like real estate. 
but in real estate, there's that override. That's they say, what's your favorite ride? It's the override. Yeah. You know, we're in the spread business. Producers are worried about contracts and leads. We'll get to that later. Builders love overrides and spreads because I'd rather get 20, 30, 40, 50% spread off 2,000 agents versus just 100% of whatever I'm selling. Good luck. You know? That's right. So uh, recruiting and building, it, it takes some time to build. It 100% does. But stop thinking about six months from now or even 12 months from now. Think about six years from now. Yep. You know, so I'm going on eight years into the into the business, um, starting from scrap, uh, from scratch, and um, and now we have you know several offices, several hundred agents. You know, I'll be making a multiple six the rest of my life, and now we're getting that to seven. And yep. uh, you know, my goal is to get all the other guys, Nick, everyone else, to have the same opportunity. But hey, hey, John, John do, you st- do you in the insurance business? Tell everybody wants to know this. Mm-hmm. Do you still get paid from stuff you did seven eight years ago? Of course, in the insurance industry, I got. We get paid again. We get paid twice a week. We get paid on Tuesdays, Fridays, and what I love, we even get paid on Wednesdays. If you notice, we get paid on Wednesdays and Saturdays too. And I'm seeing residuals coming in all the time. And I remember this client, and it even reminds me. Oh, I need to call this client, say hello, how are things? So uh, when the checks come in, it all the whole list comes up. So absolutely, and that's the benefit of residuals. You know, you still get paid on things you wrote five, ten years ago. I think that's why people invest in real estate to get residual passive. Passive, yeah. Yep. Nick, Nick, let me ask you from a realtor standpoint, from a realtor standpoint, you being a realtor, you being a licensed real estate agent, okay. can you think of maybe three, four, five characteristics of why a typical realtor would love the insurance industry? Yeah, I mean, so being a realtor in this industry, it's kind of, we're doing the same thing, just a different product. So being a realtor, you're out there talking to people anyway. You're out there networking all the time. Like John said, you you know we're always prof- you know professionally dressed, uh, just in case we run into somebody, right? So I think one would be we're already doing it anyway. We're doing we're doing everything that we're doing in real estate can be transferred over into insurance. Um, really, think about it. You got to find that specific buyer, right? Somebody's looking. Realtors always looking for a buyer or a seller. If you look around, there's how many people walking around? Each one of these people have a life. So we have to, hey, they need to be protected, right? Yeah. So maybe they may not be able to buy a house or sell a house right now or then, but you know what? They need to know about life insurance. They need to know about the protection. They need to know about retirement. Um, so there, I think it's just there's more people out there that need our services in, in insurance than in real estate. Um, so, so in other words, it's easier to find more buyers for insurance, for life insurance, than to buy buyers for real estate. Yes. Wow. Absolutely. Okay. We'll be, we'll be another one that's striking you. Because by the way, you, you're making some good money here, man. And yeah. I, I'm, I'm seeing your checks here, bro. I mean. Yeah. Nice. yeah it's, it's nice. Oh, I love that. I, I love that. Okay. We can do like literally we can do write a policy today and get paid today with certain insurance companies. Right. As long as you have everything in hand, send it in. Boom. On the spot. Because, because of our insured tech. Because, you know, at PHP, we were in the insured tech space. Because the technology and simplified issue, insurance companies today, you know, when, when I got involved in the insurance industry, it, it normally took 30 days to get approved for a life insurance policy. Mm-hmm. But you're telling me today that you can take an application today for a healthy individual. And because of technology, you can get that client approved today. And the client today. gets approved today. The insurance companies pay today. Right. Is that what you're saying? That's what I'm saying. Yeah, and in and in in real estate, if you have a cash buyer, it's still going to take three to seven days to close and everything else like that, and <laughs> things come up, you know. But that's if you have a cash buyer, you know, those are hard to come by. Um, but the regular transaction takes about thirty to forty-five days in real estate, and you got to hope and pray that the buyer doesn't buy a car or the buyer something doesn't come up on their mortgage or something like that, or the inspection is good. Um, you know, it's it's very hard and very rare to find that, you know. The, the guy that everything just goes smoothly. Nothing ever really goes smoothly all the time. Yeah, there's no such thing as a perfect real mm-hmm. estate transaction. I mean, when I was buying mm-hmm. real estate, I had a credit approved, good credit, you know, all this stuff down. But something was always wrong. You know, conditions came up. Do we have a clear to close? Do we have a clear to close? What's going on? Yeah. yeah. Well, what's 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 another what's another one? Um, I, I don't know. I mean, I think those are I think the biggest ones really. So, so more buyers for life insurance in real estate. Yeah. 
and you can your sales cycle is a lot faster. Okay. Oh, and well, and residuals. I mean, there will be residuals. Yeah. Uh, is there any residual income of real estate? Yes or no? If no, not really. Uh, being a realtor, no. And there's certain companies out there that will. It's not really a residual income because it's capped. It stops. But um, no, there's really not unless they're you manage calling, property. They're calling the residual a residual, but it's actually an override. There's a company that's in real estate that allows you to recruit one or two generations. You're like exit, it's, it's, exit. Exit. it's an override. It's not a residual. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Right. But but you're over it. And here's the thing too: if the guy that recruited you here, and this this guy you recruited, if he wants to get here, in that model, I don't know, can they? No. Can they get the same level? No. So you're stuck. No. Yeah. It's a pyramid. Yeah. <laughs> Why well, just stay at a job? Yeah. Right. Because it's only a matter of time before this guy gets good. If you're really building people, mm -hmm. before them to say, you know, I want your position. So let's let's talk about that real quick. Nick, do you like do you like John's position as a as yeah. a uh, executive marketing director and co-owner of PHP Agency? Yes. Now, now, John, are you stiff arming him to say no, Nick? No, you can't. I don't want to teach you everything. I want you to get too smart to get to my position to take over my spot. Are you having that conversation with with, with Nick? I actually want him to make 20, 30, 40, 50 times more than I do. <laughs> because and by the way, that's the beauty of our business model, not the insurance industry. That's the beauty of our business model. That's right. right. There's no caps. And the best part is, uh, you know, the, the, when you build people and you build them long term, there's a long term financial gain for you. That's the best part. I'm not threatened. If this was a regular real estate company, even a regular insurance company, you know, Mason Financial, he finally learns what I know. He knows that I'm getting the high contract, the 120, the 150, and I'm giving him his 80, his 90. He says, wait a second, I can go do this myself. He's going to leave and go get his own contract. There's yep. no retention. There's no retention. So with our, with our comp, with our model, the more he does, the more I'm going to earn long term. So I have a financial gain to make him as good or better than me, and then even help him get his own office, because as he expands, I'm still going to override that. Yep. So, it, you know, obviously there's another real estate company that has a similar setup. I'm like, and I don't know if I need to say it on, on here. Um, but they have a, they, they're probably one of the closest. And I like their comp plan. I think they have a good comp plan. Obviously, I wish it went further, but ours, you know, it keeps going. So that there's yep. an incentive for us to recruit, train, and retain people long term. And guys, uh, um, John Mason made a mention to it earlier, but this is this month's current insurance news net magazine. This is the our trade publication. You know, every carrier, fi uh, uh, field, financial market organization reads this, mm -hmm. and um, and and you know, right? Uh, we we read this, and the industry. This is you know how we stand and know. So if you recruit an agent, and they're and and, and you're, you're recruiting them, your agent is it going to eventually read this? Because they want to be up to speed on their industry. But what's going to happen is, is all the advertising in here has got all the competitors of the insurance agency advertising in here. And they're going to be asking around, hey, is, is, is John giving me the best deal, especially if I want to build an agency? They're always going to be asking. They may not ask you in front of you, but they're asking behind you. Why? Because they got these trade publications. And it's all, by the way, this is just the paper copy. I'm not even talking about the YouTube videos and what's online. So with that being said, um, the Insurance News Net Conference is coming up here in Chicago. And uh, uh, quick plug, guess who's speaking at this insurance conference? Our CEO, Patrick but David, happens to be right there, the other way. Right, boom, right there. And he's known as an industry disruptor. We're disrupting the industry. So the, the exciting part about this is we're disrupting the current model of the insurance industry with our model that John Mason has been with for eight years. And uh, today he's a co-owner of, uh, uh, of a PHB agency. I call him business partner. And he's uh, uh, less than $8,000 from cracking a quarter million bucks. A lot of people can't say that with a BS and BS. So, so uh, Nick, um, what, what's it like for you now? Uh, uh, Nick, what's it like for you now to, to, to be working side by side with your buddy from 10, 11 years old 
And uh, initially he said no, but now let's do this, bro. Yeah. What, what's it like for you now uh, to be working side by side with Mace? Well, I'm, I'm excited. You know, I'm, I'm really excited. Uh, I mean, the, just the things that we've been doing for the past really six, seven months that he's been here because he's only been here since I uh, like moved here since January. Um, you know, he was going back and forth, back and forth. He was staying at our house and stuff. But uh, now that he's been here, it's, it's been it's been fun. Uh, we're growing an office. We have, I believe, we have like an over, I want to say, 100 agents already, and we've been doing this out of Panera Bread. Um, you know, we're, and that's the funny thing. I mean, like yesterday, last night, we took over a whole section of Panera Bread again for the second week in a row, and uh, we stayed in after. And they had to come. In, they actually had to come and tell us, "Look, we're closed. You guys have to leave." <laughs> <laughs> you know, and we're like, no, we're training, we're training. So I mean, it's been it's been real fun. I'm learning lots. Um, you know, my whole family now is protected with insurance um, now, and um, it's been fun. And I can't wait to get into our office in the next couple of days, and because I know it's, it's going to be a blast. Yeah, looks like. By the way, looks like Chris Orgiles has got like a two part question for you guys. Listen, guys, if you guys got questions, fire away. Let's involve you. In this conversation, we got about another five minutes to go uh, before the shows are before we got to run our business for the rest of the day. But if you guys got questions, you know, uh, jot them down. I know there's some questions that we've been answering along the way. But uh, uh, John, uh, John, I got another question for you. What do you, as a recruiter, as a builder, what are you telling real estate agents? Why the life insurance industry? First, when, when it comes to recruiting, I follow the, the PHP method, PHP. P is I want to find out what their pain is. H is I want to find out who's helping them. And then P is what's their plan. It's very simple, right? And with, with a lot of realtors, um, and I respect what realtors do. I mean, you know, one of my best friends has been in real estate. And I like real estate. People think, so no, we like real estate. There's, real estate has the Babe Ruth syndrome, though. What do you mean Babe Ruth syndrome? Well, Babe Ruth was the strikeout king, but he's also the home run king. Well, real estate's made the most millionaires, but also has caused the most bankruptcies. So a lot of realtors that I come across, they get into the industry, but it's not what they thought. After they sold their mother's house, their brother's house, their cousin's house, it's done. And there's, they find themselves spending 25, 30, 40, 50,000 a year just in marketing, just in marketing. They didn't yeah. understand how saturated it is. And um, it's very, very tough. So realistically, the, 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 the things that I hear, the most common objections or the most common concerns that come from realtors, number one is speed of pay, which means the whole process. You can have, you can have something, uh, you can have a deal ready to rock and roll. Then on the very last day on closing day, something happens. And Nick can, Nick can vouch for that. Someone can sell a property without even telling you. Uh, some, or we, just, we just went through something like that recently. Um, a credit score is not where it needs to be. There's a debt that's on the report that comes up. Something can happen. And then it could take from a, a 30 day situation, it could be six months for one closing. Um, but with insurance, you can write a policy on Monday, it pays on Friday. You don't need to put $40,000 down or $10,000 down or $20,000 down. You can start an insurance policy for 150 bucks a month. Yep. You know, on a permanent side, you could do a term policy for 30 bucks a month. So it's not, it, it pays extremely well. It pays extremely quickly. People are saying, I need stability. Okay, well, if you don't have a market, you have to learn how to get to the market, just like in real estate. Uh, but what I've noticed with realtors is they already have contacts and they already have some kind of business establishment, some kind of business relationship where all it takes is one simple question. Hey, by the way, who does your retirement? Hey, by the way, what kind of insurance do you have in place? You know what? We should sit. Because realtors already have the trust with their clients. And now they just take it a step further. Um, and that's what I've been noticing. It's just the fact that they're, they're very open to conversation. Realtors on the recruiting side, they want to make money. They want to be part of a community. They want to be involved in some fun. They want to be part of an uplifting culture. And yep. uh, that's what we provide. They come into our environment. They come to our office, even at a Panera Bread. Like, what is going on? Like, why are people actually coming to talk to me? Why are people actually nice? And uh, there's a lot of similarities they're finding with real estate, with PHP where it's vibrant, it's uplifting, it's inspiring. There's education involved on, on finance and money. Uh, but the uh, possibility uh, is just on a, on a bigger scale. Yeah, I'm, I'm looking at a Business Insider um, report here. 
is due to rising inflation, rising interest rates, and really a, a, a lack of new homes being built in a marketplace today. Uh, for, it says here, first time home buyers are the biggest losers. First, first time home buyers are the biggest losers when it comes to rising inflation. Yeah. Yeah. So there, there's the economic. So as it wasn't hard enough to be in real estate, there's economic driving forces that's making it difficult for people to say, I want a home, but man, cost of inflation is high. I really need to make more money to qualify for this home to get in the home. But we don't have that problem inside the insurance industry, do we? It's, it's not trendy. You know, well, what one report from business is, and, and here's what's going on in the insurance industry 149,000. Agents in insurance today. Speaking of real estate, there's 150,000 real estate agents just in California. Right? There's 140,000, 149,000 insurance agents in the entire industry today. And we got a big problem. What's the big problem? 8% of college graduates are graduating without a job lined up. But what they do have lined up six months later is student loan debt. The problem we have is a lot of people are, aren't prepared for retirement or behind on preparing for retirement. A lot of people today are going without even without insurance. How many times how many times do you have you seen that? Well, people have a home, have a car, and yet because nobody's talked to them about what? Life insurance. Nick, have you run across that? No. Yep. Nice house, nice car, and BMW Mercedes. Ooh, life insurance. No. Yep. I spoke with someone today actually. Um, owns a business. Him and his brother own a nice uh, business doing rentals. And they don't have life insurance. I actually talked to them about it today. So I'm going to be meeting with them hopefully this next week or so. That's it. So as, as we close off, John, you, you've, you've obviously been a student of the business. You've been a student of the industry. What's some final things you would say to somebody out there when comparing, if I'm a real estate agent, if I'm a mortgage broker, why should they reach out to John Mason in Orlando, Florida? Why should they reach out? We're, uh, reach out to Nick Polson out there, work with you guys in Orlando, comparing uh, a traditional insurance agency versus you with PHB agency. Okay. What would you say? So, so serious, serious question, question, serious answer. answer. So, so, you know, we like that. Like joke a lot. A lot. Um, um, number one, the office, the office we have is going to open, I think, next week, week, from what I hear from the builders. Uh, they're putting in the glass. It's going to be a beautiful 4,500 square foot spot in Altamont Springs, uh, literally right off I 4. Uh, right behind the uh, Altamont Springs Mall, we have the whole first floor. Whole first floor is ours. Um, as far as getting into the insurance industry, look, here's what I can say. Real estate takes some time to build, no matter what you're going to do. There is no overnight get rich quick. Insurance is not get rich quick. It's get rich eventually. Right? You need to build a business. You have to learn some new skills. You have to learn some new products. And then it's all about building and developing. As far as you talked about working with myself, well, I have a proven track record of building brokers that are all making six figures. I'm the first three-time equity owner partner of the company. Um, obviously, that we just celebrated that this past week. Yeah. Even that's showing up in Nick. Nick's about to become a broker himself, and he'll be making six figures here shortly. So insurance broker. broker. Insurance broker. Insurance broker. So the track record of recruiting and developing is there. Anyone can recruit you to the business with some fancy words. But it's about developing people, personal development, leadership development uh, on how to build a business and to be able to run that business. Uh, so that's the track record. And Nick's been in, in, in finance for several years. And the thing is, he's making a multiple six-figure income in real estate. So he understands that world. And he brings a ton of value. His wife, Amber, is bringing a ton of value. She's a big, big reason why the Orlando office is doing what it's doing out of a Panera Bread. And... Um, as far as working in the industry right now, PHP versus the industry. Let's 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 start with this one. I get calls all the time, every single day, every single day. Once you get licensed, you're going to get calls nonstop. Every company, every company has the best contract, the best leads, best contract, best leads, and it never stops. Everyone's got the best leads. Okay, look, a producer is worried about contracts and leads. And they're going to keep chasing and chasing and chasing. I get it. Everybody loves a buck 20, buck 50 contract, which we can all get right now. Everyone knows the contacts. Most people start off at 80, 90%. Okay. But there's no overrides. There's no spreads. There's no systems. You're pretty much on your, on your face. I had a guy in Jacksonville that started with me, left, and said, I'm going to go get a higher contract. Six months later, calls me. He says, John, do you believe in second chances? Uh-huh. Because everything you said is what happened. Because that's what happens. 
It's not as supportive as you thought it was. Builders, builders, agency builders are concerned about three major things. Number one are systems. Systems is what runs the business, not the people. System runs the business. For example, we're going to Greece this summer. Yep. I'm my parents, mom and dad are paid for them. I'm taking my brother, his girlfriend, Fernando. We're going. My business is still going to run because there's a system in place. Two, we want overrides. And three, we want spreads. And that's a life. So let's say there's a guy making 300000 a year just on his own pen. But you have 300000 a year just on your overrides. Which would you rather have? And as yeah. we talked about the other day, the high producer might win the battle, but building it at is going to win the war. War. That's right. And, uh, there's three things you want to own if you're going to get into our game. Number one, you want to own your client, your book of business. There are some agencies that do. Most do not. Read the fine print. It's there. Ours, you, you own your book too. You want to be able to build and own your own agency, which is what we're doing in Orlando. And we develop other offices around the country, not just even in Florida. And three, you want to own a piece of the company. Right now, we're the only ones giving out equity. You know, um, you know, Aflac's an amazing company. We have some agents that, that work with the firm and uh, their stock just split. And everyone that has some nice stock, it's split. We're not even there yet. Imagine getting 1% equity in Aflac. That's yeah. what's going on. We're still in the equity. There's equity, profit sharing, IPO stock. You have a shot of getting all four. That's it. So we're looking for guys that want to recruit an agency. We want to recruit guys that want to build. We want guys that have the Keller Williams guy mindset of being the broker with 200 realtors running around. Only we can take this bigger and longer. And, um, and right now we're just looking for the guys that are hungry, that are looking for a, a different quality of life, that want to have a residual six-figure plus income coming in no matter what and be around people that will actually have their best interest in mind and help them get a piece of equity in the company. I love it. I love it. Hey, guys, thank you so much for taking some time out of your day to join me on this conversation here during the Money Smart Show. Uh, Nick, as we wrap up stuff, bro, any any final thoughts you'd like to share with everybody? Just um, timing, timing in business, really. I mean, now is a great time. Like you said, equity uh, is a big thing, and that's what we're fighting for right now. And we're excited. Uh, my wife and I, Amber, we're excited and looking to wrap up our, our run to become a broker and then hit equity this year and next year. Awesome. And Mac, I just want to thank you for doing what you're doing. Uh, these shows are so valuable. The, the message that you preach on a day to day, uh, as far as just empowering and educating people about money and the money smart movement, just a privilege and honor to be working with you, bud. I just want to share that with you. I appreciate it, my man. Yeah. Yeah, thank and, you. And here's uh, John. Thank you so much for that. And, and here's my thoughts. Here's my one thought is that no matter how much real estate investment I can purchase, right? I can only maximize the rent or income from that property, assuming 100% is rented and and um, you know that that property is sold. There's, so there's a finite, finite, end with real estate. But the thing with insurance, it, we not be investing in real estate. In insurance, we deal with real people, and real estate is limited. Real people is unlimited. I'd rather deal with people because you never know the size of the dog, uh, the dog fight in somebody's heart, the fire in the belly to want to take some, to want to take some big things uh, uh, to the next level. So um, you're getting a lot of love here, guys. You know, uh, Kimberly, Michelle, thank you, Matt, John Lance, Semper Fi, Dan Trey from Dallas. Uh, they want to Nick, Nick, what's your contact, man? How do people find you on uh, online? Uh, Facebook. It's Nick Polson. On Facebook, that's all. That's my contact right there. P O U L S E N. Correct. Right. You can find John Mason. Uh, just look for John Mace, Money Mace. He runs his Money Tip Tuesdays every Tuesday. He gets very specific into some financial concepts. So uh, Latina Vega from New York says this helps as I'm going to a networking event with many realtors tonight. Thank you for this valuable information. Jenna Houston Building and Agency is going to win the war. There you go. G-Force Lopez, thanks, Matt. Thank you for watching. Thank you for sharing. And thank you guys for tuning in. Well, that does it for another episode of the Money Smart Show here with my good friends John Mason and Nick Polson out of Orlando, Florida. Wow. If you've been watching this show, thank you for sharing. Thank you for watching. If you are watching this on Facebook, make sure you like our page on Facebook. If you're watching this replay on YouTube, make sure you click the subscribe button, hit the bell for the not notification card so you are updated as soon as we upload the next video and you'll be one of the first to watch and comment 
on Bad Video. So that being said, on behalf of John Mason, on behalf of Nick Polson from Orlando, Florida, you guys join me with us until we meet again. Continue to live smart. Continue to love smart. Love smart. Money smart. Money smart today. today. <laughs> Appreciate you guys. Cool. Thanks for tuning in. Thanks. Catch us next Wednesday, 1 p.m. Central Standard Time. Money Smart Show. Peace out, guys. Separate five.